Greetings everyone and welcome back. Here's something fun. Snake Game Console is a portable gaming console with a specifically designed Raspberry Pi Pico 2 driver circuit and an RGB 64x32 P3 matrix panel. We modeled the device in Fusion 360, 3D printed the frame and assembled it with the matrix panel and custom PCBs to make our own game console. We control the snake's movement with the D-pad. The objective is to consume as much food or the red dots as possible. The score mark position in the upper right corner of the screen indicates our progress. The snake can cross display boundaries. However, if he cut himself during the gameplay, the game ends and you are presented with a red screen that reads game over along with your score. The game will restart and continues after 5 seconds of waiting. By hitting the push button on the console's back, the entire device can be turned on or off. It has an integrated battery that enables the user to carry it around and play the games while on the go. I have also prepared a brief instructables about this project which you can check out for code and other detail about this project. The link is in video description and now let's get started with the build. We are utilizing the 64x32 RGB matrix panel which creates vivid text, graphics and animations by arranging 2048 RGB LEDs in a 64x32 grid. This matrix was produced by Waveshare and more thorough details on the matrix board may be found on its wiki page. As for sourcing this matrix panel, we got it from PCBWay's gift shop. The first stage in this project was to build the 3D model of the console, which has two hand grips like component installed on the back side of the matrix. We then create a model of the special button board on one side. The Pico driver circuit was then fastened on the hand grip frame with the four spacers and is positioned on the back side of the design. Using three M3 inserts that are already on the matrix, two hand grip frame components are mounted on the back side of matrix panel. Each hand grip has three mounting holes that we added so that the M3 bolt can be used to attach hand grip to the matrix. Using our PCB CAD software, we first created the schematic for the Pico driver port. We connected the matrix hub 75 pins to the Pico GPIO in the following order. We also added a CON5 connector for buttons and its 4 pins are connected to Pico's GPIO 6, 7, 14 and 15 and ground is attached to the CON5's 5th pin. We also incorporated a power management IC, the IP5306, a fully integrated multifunction power management SOC to power the entire setup. It can provide steady 5V 2.1 amps using a 3.7V as an input and which can be used to power any 5V device. In our instance, the Matrix and the Pico 2. Next, we prepare the schematic for the button board. It has 4 push buttons with 4 and 3 pin of each button connected to ground Additionally, there is a CON5 connector that is attached to each connectors 1 and 2 for GPIO pins and 3 and 4 for ground pin. We use the PCB editor to prepare the board file by aligning all the components of both board by following the CAD layout. We made two PCBs for this project, the button board and the Pico driver board. Two orders were made, one for the button board and one for the Pico driver board. The button board PCB was ordered in white solder mask and black silk screen while the Pico driver PCB was ordered in blue solder mask and white silk screen. After placing the order, the PCBs were received within a week and the PCB quality was pretty great. Over the past 10 years, PCB Way has distinguished themselves by providing outstanding PCB manufacturing and assembly services, becoming a trusted partner for countless engineers and designers worldwide. Their commitment to quality and customer satisfaction has been unwavering, leading to significant growth and expansion. You guys can check out PCBWay if you want great PCB service at an affordable rate and low price. Using a solder paste dispensing needle, we apply solder paste to each component pad one by one. Next, we use an ESD tweezer to select and position each assembly component on the PCB. Following the component placement, the circuit is raised and set on the reflow hot plate. 
which raises the PCB temperature from below up to the solder paste melting temperature. Solder paste melt and all the SMD components are secure in this place when the PCB hits the temperature of 190 degrees Celsius. Following the reflow process, we flip the board over and use a soldering iron to position the 18650 holder on the PCB. After that, the USB micro port and push switch are installed. We flip the board over and solder both of their pads. After positioning two CON20 header pin on the Pico 2 footprint and two CON8 header pins on the Hub75 connector footprint, we flip the board over and use a soldering iron to solder their pads. Finally, we install a lithium cell in its cell holder and position the Raspberry Pi Pico over the CON20 header pin. In order to begin the button board assembly process, we first position all the buttons from the top side of the board and then solder their pads from the bottom side. Using the wire hardness that was included in the matrix kit, we connect the Pico driver and the matrix together. We soldered the positive wire of the wire harness to the 5V output of Pico driver and the negative wire to ground of the Pico driver. Next, we attach the female wire harness connector to the matrix male connector. The Hub75 wire harness is then plugged into the matrix connector first and then its other end is connected to the Pico driver. By aligning the mounting holes of the two 3D printed hand grip frame with the matrix, we now attach them to the back side of the matrix. Six M3 bolts are then used to connect frame and matrix together. We can easily connect the frame and matrix with an M3 bolt thanks to the M3 brass inserts that have been added on the back side of the matrix. The button board is then positioned from the front side of the console and four M2 screws are used to secure it in its place. Now, we use four 3D printed spacers to position the Pico driver on the back side of the console over the 3D printed frame. We put the Pico driver over the four spacer that we place over the mounting holes on the frame and then use M3 screws to secure the Pico driver with the frame. Wiring the D-pad button PCB and Pico driver board together is the final stage in the assembly process. We first add 5 connecting wires to the button board's CON5 port. And then we connect each wire to the Pico driver in the correct pin order. The button board's up pin is connected to GPIO 7, down pin is connected to GPIO 6. Left pin is connected to GPIO 15 and right pin is connected to GPIO 14. Once the wires between the Pico driver and button boards are connected, we carefully tuck the extra wire length within the frame and secure it with small bit of hot glue.
Here's the end result of this long but straightforward build. A functional handheld snake game console that functions perfectly. It has an integrated battery that enables the user to carry it around and play games while on the go. We can control snake movement with D-pad. The objective is to consume as much as food or the red dot as possible. The score marker position in the upper right corner of the screen indicates our progress. The snake game console can run virtually anything, including games. To run the games, we first need to build them ourselves or port already existing games. But that is a topic for another time. Let me know if you require any additional help. All the document, file and codes are included in the project article which you can visit, link is in video description. In addition, we appreciate PCBWay support of this project. Visit them for a variety of PCB related services such as stencil service, PCB assembly services as well as 3D printing services. Thanks for reaching this far and I'll be back with a new project pretty soon. Peace out.